Tom here from Lawrence Systems. Unify Network Controller 6.0.41 has been released. And the question on everyone's mind, or at least what they tag me in, is should we upgrade to this? Short answer, yes, I've upgraded. And Riley Chase, owner of Hostify, has upgraded many systems as well. But he did halt the process because he had a few edge cases, but we haven't identified what those problems are other than they don't upgrade. So for the most part, this upgrade for most people seems to have gone fine, including myself. And for, well, quite a few of the controllers, Riley had good luck with them, but a few of them didn't. Before we dive into all those details, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Now, as I stated, we upgraded our system and didn't have any problems. I did speak with Riley from Hostify, who upgraded over 100 of them before he had a couple that the database wouldn't migrate over. This is one of the reasons it's so important to have a full backup before you do this. That way, if everything goes wrong, you can revert to the backup. For me, this runs as a virtual machine inside of my XCPNG server, and I snapshot it and roll it back if things go wrong. That's just kind of, you know, been my process for a while, and it uh, keeps my sanity in case there's some reason we have to roll back. Of note, it is running Debian Linux version 9. I have eight processors assigned to it, and it has 16 gigs of RAM. It's only using about four gigs right now, so it's not really taxing the system. So you have four gigs out of the 16 gig use, and eh, generally speaking, when you're not making any changes, the processor sits quite idle. Now, another thing I had a few people mention was the maps weren't working. I haven't seen this problem at all since I moved to six, but I don't know because I've had a few people that I've seen it not work, and they've asked me what to do to fix it. And I don't really have a solution because for people that it's completely broken, where this map decides to no longer function, it just doesn't work unless you reload the controller. I haven't figured out what the switch you have to flip is that breaks it or how to unbreak it other than reload the controller, migrate to the other controller, and sometimes just restoring from a backup is fixed as well. So kind of a strange one, but I have not experienced any issues with it. And uh, for the record, this device right here that shows not actually attached is um, not actually attached us for a future video and it's not inside my network. Uh, and it, me who may have guessed that by its name, port tap. Back to the controller. This is just a patch release of the 6.0 series. So the bigger release details are over here. Dashboard updates, combined radio, uh, according into one property panel. There's a lot of small improvements they made. Uh, exposed advanced features, checkbox in the classic settings. I'm hoping they go back and forth and fix some of this because I don't like when you have to switch back and forth between the new settings and the old. I know their goal is probably to get things to new settings. I don't mind the way it looks. I just want it to be one or the other, not have to occasionally when I look for something, have to find both. Now, from a day-to-day -day basis, it's really not a big deal because the new settings are really only for when you're setting up a new client. But obviously, this breaks some things, including me who makes videos about this. I guess it's opportunities I can make new videos, but things aren't where they used to be. And so someone may reference something and go, hey, what version are you on? Well, the new version, they move that feature here. I don't mind and there is always changes in UI, but obviously this is, uh, it's not finished. So having to go back and forth between two you, you know, interfaces makes it eh, a little difficult, but hopefully they're gonna fix some of those things. Uh, looks like they fixed some typos and misspellings and not really anything major in here uh, like updated minimum rssi range for when you're determining how you want the thresholds to be for when a client gets a disconnect from an ap so there's like little tuning they did um, and a lot of like the wi-fi experience showing zero occasionally i never really stare much at that i also don't look a lot at the dashboard i mean i can go over to the dashboard but honestly i don't spend any time here we also pretty much universally do not use any of the Dream Machines or the Unified Gateways deployed to our clients. So 
if you're having problems with those, they're just not something we use. We've repeated this uh, quite a bit in the last, well, handful of videos and updates I've talked about Unify, just because a lot of people throw, well, I'm having all these problems on my USG. This is also why we don't use USGs and people bring a lot of problems uh, to the USG with us. I think these dashboards are really pretty and people do like to use one of the Unify devices for routing to you know help complete the dashboard but honestly i don't look a lot at dashboards i dive deep into details and actual problems not just kind of statistics that don't give me a ton of great detail so there are some fixes though to this and it looks like there's you know some randomness that was in there that hopefully has been resolved as well um, overall riley did have a post and i'll leave a link to course to this and this is on page four where riley's post is and he shows some of the things and other people he had these same problems well and these are problems with migration that people had uh, specifically Raleigh did on some of the servers they were maintaining at hostify and uh like i said it's not really a, a clean error and it didn't still make anyone replied to the actual error itself so yeah that's kind of interesting that it's in there but uh it, i wish they had a better you know, error log that and someone would reply to it so we know exactly why those ones won't upgrade. So my best advice if you're going to switch this new version is make a backup first, make a full backup like I do is my uh, with a whole virtual machine is obviously super ideal because you shut it down and revert completely back to the way it was. And uh, hopefully it works for you. It seems to, from based on the comments, quite a few people have not had any issues uh, at all. But I will admit, uh, this is one thing and someone brought this up of their not showing things properly. I thought this one was interesting. They tried the app and one app says it was working and then the, on their phone, then the app on their tablet said it wasn't working. Thought that was a little bit strange, but I will admit too, uh, clearing your browser cache is something really important because of the way the Unify controller uh, sends all the data into your browser. You really have to make sure sometimes rebooting devices and clearing the browser. There's actually, I think it was probably over on page one, a few people clear the browser. Because if you don't, you'll assume it broke. And what I mean by that is if you don't force reload the browser page after you've done an update, what you end up with is a bunch of variables dumped onto the screen. And I've seen people send me screenshots of that saying, hey, the controller update didn't work right. And it's just got a bunch of variables. Literally dumping the browser cache fixes that. Open up a new browser, open up a different browser, and you'll find uh, that problem kind of is because the browser wants to cache it and doesn't realize there's a new version. So other than that, I haven't really had any other issues. Everything seems to be working. I've actually been doing some lab work the last couple of days with this particular version. And... Uh, all the settings, provisioning, uh, changes internally, and stuff I pushed for uh, remote clients. No issues so far. Um, that's my thoughts on it, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.